So I am the White Doctor and we are back with our Let's Play Master of Orion 3. Here we are looking at diplomacy options and there is not much to do since we only met one of our enemies, those Cavalier Lions there. Imseis is the race name here. See, here we can see our leaders and I'm much too faster. I have to think about next time. Lots of our colony ships are still on the way. Minimal military. Well, and at this point I apparently took a look at a few uh, more planets, sending a few, a few new ships. No colony ships this time. Outpost? Yes, outpost ships it was. And here st starting finally with designing new ships. Now that a few new technologies should have arrived by now, um, a bit to the space yard here. Ship design in Master of Orion 3 is actually quite simple. First you take a ship type. We, uh, in the beginning you can only build up to a light cruiser, but I already uh, researched the next part, the, the normal cruiser. And then you take what kind of ship, you can either buy an immobile a space station, a spaceship for, well, interstellar flight, and a bit more sturdier build a uh, intersystem ship, but those ships are literally, literally uh, chained to your, to the system you build them in, so better be careful. So let's just say building them uh, in battleship or larger is a bit of a, a resource waste since you can't <laughs> move them. If you want that kind of defense, better build space station or something. Then you have weapons, they come in three flavors. Fighters, uh, rockets and direct fire weapons. The funny thing is, in vanilla, direct uh, uh, rockets were vastly overpowered, but, well, in Ultima mod, that's not the case anymore, and uh, a few more types, but we're getting later, uh, getting to them later. Direct fire weapons are, are, are coming in different flavors too, but wait, I'll try to take it a bit shorter. Well, we'll start with direct fire weapons. There you have weapons who actually fire directly like this PP guns, or the part particle projector guns I have. And fusion cannons, they mm, have all different things uh, uh, like range and stuff and uh, damage, but essentially they fire. At shorter range they do, do more damage and hit ease more easily, more easily. At longer range, they're kind of more 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 wonky at hitting stuff, and they'll uh, do they um, don't do as much damage. Oh man! The other kind of uh, direct fire weapons, like mass drivers and so on, they is essentially mm, hyper technology bullet ballistic weapons and. They do the, da the same damage regardless of uh, how far away the target is, but mm, they are not very good at actually hitting something. At least in the beginning, mm, every weapon sooner or later gets upgrades and stuff, and then you mm, uh, at least can can hit something if you take those weapons. In the beginning, weapons like mass drivers are often uh, more an hi a hindrance than an actual uh, actual asset to your fleet because well, it's not it's t it's uh, well it's nice uh, if you can double the amount of damage than your enemies but it's not nice if most of your shots go well while veering wildly off target then you'll still still get an ass reaming and ah uh, yeah second type of weapons rockets. You will need two components per rocket. First off, you will need launchers. The more launchers, the more rockets you can fire per salvo. And then you'll need ammunition. And boy, let's just say that even with the smaller types of launchers, there are not that many rockets you can 
stuff inside your ships. At the beginning you should wildly while avoid them, mm, later even in the Ultima mod they get quite powerful and well you can experiment with them. Then after the trouble of actually needing ammunition though, they are not that good. Better building fighters, especially later on if you have larger fighters, more diverse weaponry research and so. Uh, the fighters, uh, the, the third type of weapons that works is... How do I describe it best? Well, you stuff your ship full with uh, fighters. Every fighter you have uh, takes away uh, capacity. For, uh, you see that number right uh, in the lower right edge. That number is the capacity. Uh, the larger the type of ship, uh, the hull you have chosen, uh, the more stuff you can cram in. And, well, everything, every compo component needs a certain capacity. Uh, stuff like engines and so on is upscaled, which means the larger the hull, the more capacity it takes away. But weapons uh, are only scaled to what they are. For example, an interceptor fighter takes less place away like uh, an actual space space superiority fighter, for example, or a large gun takes uh, more place than a small gun and so on and on and on. Now back to fighters. Well, the trouble with MO3 is mm, if you build a carrier with fighters as main weapon, then you'll get, well, just say an unfair advantage, because fighters are not <laughs> used in... How should I describe it best? Okay, it works this way. You... Uh, le let's say you start a fight. You taking over your fleet in direct control, and then you take your little fire, um, carrier task forces and order them to attack. Now all fighters will start and fly immediately to the target and start pelting us, uh, it with their weapons. Then regardless, then, uh, then your carriers, you will notice, will suddenly get reinforcements so seemingly, seemingly from the Phantom Zone or something. And you'll get new fighters f who will be uh, refueled, even if you technically technically shouldn't have fighters anymore. And regardless what happens to your actual fighters um, of fighting, in the beginning you won't notice what happens now that badly because mostly all your fighters will be sooner or later destroyed or the fight will end too fast to notice something weird happen, but in longer fights it will go like this. Your first wave will start, attack the enemy, and after a few minutes a second wave will start from your carriers, attack the enemies, and after a few more minutes a third wave will start and... well, <laughs> it goes on like that. Essentially, if you make fast carriers and let them run away from your enemy, you can sh simply start pelting even a vastly superior force with a never-ending stream of fighters if you choose uh, to fight like an ultra bastard. <laughs> and because of that, carriers are like the ultimate weapon. If you use carriers, well, as soon as you ha have most of the essential technologies like better weapons, better fighters, stuff like that, and larger ships for more fighters to cram in, then you'll just waltz right over the poor AI and, well, utter humili humiliating them. Ah, yeah. Uh. So that's it regarding to weapons. Engines are a bit easier. You have interstellar engines for actually spaceships or Raumschiff as it's called here in German. <laughs> and yeah, in the beginning you have uh, only the most basic stuff, barely enough to actually let you use star lanes, but later on you will unlock larger and better engines to well fly faster through hyperspace. And the other engine, well, 
it's self-explanatory is the system drive system engine allowing you to well fly through the, as a normal space yes it's the point where you can manipulate the most to get most of your little chippies yeah. for example ships like carriers and transports don't need to be that fast actually so you can simply um, make your engine smaller than needed by making them slower your ship slower I mean and you'll get more uh, empty room for new, more weapons and stuff like that well and protection Schutz, as it's called here, the second from down, the third from uh, from above. Well, you get armor, titan, titan steel is the only thing we have now, and you get energy shields. We have unlocked to the first already electromagnetic shields or type one shields in the original, and they are not that good. They are actually quite bad. And I only have uh, small shield generators. They come in three kinds. Small, normal and large. Normal uh, essential is normal. Large takes more place. Uh, inside uh, the ship it needs more capacity. But it's also... Well, it generates better shields. And the small rings, well... They are actually making sm uh, w the shields worse than the technology description tells you. But well, shields are still better than just having a bunch of armor strapped to your ship. Especially since in Ultima the shields re regenerate uh, several times as fast as in vanilla. So <laughs> if you have two weak ships blasting away at at each other with puny laser cannons or something like that, then they're well simpler no then it's well simply no simply that no one will actually be capable of destroying the other. Well in the beginning it's better <laughs> you you'll stay still have your ship instead of losing it, so it's not that bad. And hey if you build an actual warship then it's not a problem because well most of your enemies won't in the beginning the AI is, isn't that smart and will send mostly all ships farther out and farther out so if you hold up a bit like I did and then build a bunch of new ships with what you have researched first then you'll have a vastly superior fleet and then you can do it again with the next tier of stuff you researched and up upgrade your fleet again and again catch your AI enemies by surprise and then you'll do that stuff well routinely until you win and Zusatz, the, um, the, uh, the lower, lowest point of options in the uh, ship design manager uh, they are the optional stuff like ECM, electronic countermeasures, sensor suites, uh, colony modules and stuff like that. If you need a transport ship or a colony ship then that's that's where you'll find the stuff you'll need. Uh, as for fleet, as you can see here, I'm building lots of ships. Here I'll build uh, a small long-range frigate for engaging enemies with Three particle guns and a fusion cannon for the uh, the particle guns are mostly the lighter weapons, mostly to attack fighters and rockets if they come near. But if there are no fighters, well then they'll lend firepower to the main guns. Mostly, it's kind of an oversight. Uh, it's like that. A smaller weapons. Uh, Lighter mounts uh, do, uh, don't do uh, as much damage as larger ones, but they recharge faster, they fire faster. They ho don't have that much range, but well, essentially if you need a small point defense ship, just take your best weapons and stuff it full, full of uh, 
small light mounts. Mm, here quantity is better than quality and um, if you see a, a, t a task force attacked by fighters for example you will see that the task force is essentially paralyzed until all fighters are destroyed or the task force is destroyed or retreats and well Mm, a task force automatically uses all avail available weapons to defeat the fighters, which is kind of bad if you only have uh, spine mounted weapons or la large mounts or uh, something like that for defeating large uh, capital ships, because in, in that case they will use dead weapons too, of course, and then they'll raid dutifully seconds and more seconds until they are recharged then they shoot again and if you have say 18 ships and 18 full of say 18, point, 18 large weapon mounts let's be honest and say it's they are large uh, ships and they have 10 spinal mounts each so 180 guns and then they fire, fire all the 180 guns at once and um, let's say because fighters are quite small and hard to hit, they hit 25% and something. If you have of the other side large ships too, large carriers, 18 of them in the task force, and they launch uh, hundreds of fighters each, then, well, yeah, then you have, so let's say, mm, defeated 200 of them. So, well, there are more than 1000 left, and they're pelting you the entire time and until they can fire, uh, well, pretty fast actually. So 10 seconds later half of your ships are dead and you fire a second time. And then you don't get a third time. That's bad. So you'll buy, buy not only large ships but also small ships. Then you'll say you have only 10 large ships in your task force and 8 point defense ship or something like that. But the point defense ship are smaller, mm, easier to build, they don't cost as much and they are full of light mounts, firing as fast as possible, as massive as possible salvos. Mm, it's not that good against large scale ships, but it's actually good against fighters. They will get massacred. Later on fighters get armor and shields of their own and then you will really need point defense ships. Or you can be really smart and do it like I do. If you think about uh, fighters and stuff and put always a few small weapons on your large capital ships to to avoid being embarrassed if your enemy suddenly takes out mm, his own carriers well and uh, well <laughs> now I'm starting building the ships and I'm still not finished with design stuff well too bad here I'm building shock troops and a mobile center well uh, I show better shoot it with. Yeah, hello. Now! Oh, past self, what have I done? Ah, lucky. Past self, you are redeemed. So, where was I? Ah, uh, yeah. So, long range ships <coughs> are, well, good enough for me, but sometimes you get the problem that they, f especially in the beginning phases, your weapons aren't that good actually. And you <laughs> read. Uh, sometimes meet ships well who can take some damage and with long range ships you are, um, your task forces will stay at well long range and start to slowly circle enemy task forces uh, far away and you know <laughs> either you, t you have weapons like mass drivers who do, do maximum mem damage even if long range but well have trouble actually hitting your sh enemy ship all you have energy weapons and energy weapons you know as I already told you they don't do that much damage far away and they will also get progressively worse in hitting stuff mm, overall they are only a bit better than mass drivers in that regard they are only good because well they can actually hit most of the time reliable. Most master mass driver type weapons are really horrible in that regard. Until until you actually don't need them anymore because you have actually more modern uh, energy weapons by that point. Well, 
and then a few carriers. Mm, but you should wait at least until you have a weapon that can actually scratch a large capital ship, because uh, in essence, building fighters, fighters to fight fighters, that's just a waste, a waste of time. Better straight up attack enemy carriers to end the never-ending waves of enemy fighters. It's the best. With a large force of carriers, you can simply uh, make every enemy force go away. Even large space stations can cannot hold out against large uh, swarms of little fighters. And if you actually attack planets, you will notice sooner or later, planet defenses are really, really hard and they hit like a shitload of trucks at once. To avoid your little fleets in the beginning to be totally destroyed by a single enemy planet, simply build a few carriers and if you want to co actually conquer a planet, uh, use some carriers and make the carriers actually be capable of reti retreating. They can, can be slower than normal ships, but they don't, shouldn't be totally immobile. Just in case uh, a hyperspace jump sets, sits you down too, uh, too near a planet, because pl a planet's defense batteries can have a really horrible long range. And especially in the beginning, they do enough ma damage to literally r rip you to pieces. But normally, you will jump in the system, into the, the system. Then you will simply order your task forces to retreat somewhere safe. And at the same time, you will order with a second click your fighters to start and attack the planet. And as soon as they reach the planet, they will bombard them for a few seconds, and that will be it. Then you, will, then you will only need transport ships with, uh, well, troops. Because those ships have to be in the same uh, attack, attack to actually land troops. If you order the computer to do that for you, well, most, most of the time, the, your own AI will be simply ordering all ships to bombard everything. I don't know if the owner of the player AI is actually capable of sending troops. It's just overall not a very good idea uh, to automate um, make invasions go uh, 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 automatically. An automatic invasion, well, just say, uh, in my opinion, your own AI trying to AI trying to help you is actually even worse than the enemy AI because the enemy AI can at least reasonably well execute in an inv invasion. Well, not in vanilla, in Master, in Master of Orion 3 and Ultima Orion they can because of a few little bugs uh, scripted array, you could say. And because the AI has better ships and a little bit more sense in applying those ships. In vanilla, oh, that's a horrible story. You actually have to hope the, uh, the AI is capable of just bombing your planets because they can at least do that <laughs> if you if they are lucky. All in all, as soon as you play my Master of Orion free a bit, mm, just don't play on normal or easy. That's just unfair. The AI is hampered enough by its own stupidity. Just go go. L out on hard and oh it's already end of story here well see you next time goodbye ah, I hope my English is will ah, stop it just stop